Good afternoon, everyone. Have a seat. Get off your feet. If you've been like me, you've been walking miles and miles around Tokyo for the past two or three days. Uh, so my name is Jonathan Lacour. I am the vice president of cloud and development at DreamHost. And I'm Stefano Mafulli. I'm director of cloud marketing and community at DreamHost. And we're here to talk to you about how to deploy an app to the Dream Cloud in five minutes, ish. I think ish. that should say ish at the, at the end. I <laughs> think, think it's going to take less. If, if we can get the slides to advance. Yeah. The demo gods are not kind to anyone cool. today. OK, here we go. So let's introduce DreamHost. So DreamHost's mission is to enable the world's entrepreneurs and developers to create, share, and prosper on the internet and have fun while doing it. What does that mean? Well, we, we really hear as a as a business to engage directly with developers and small business people who want to create amazing products and services. Uh, maybe it's the best cat blog if you're Jill down here. Um, but if you're a developer like one of my team and you want to get an app online, you can definitely do that as well. Uh, all the way up to you know, kind of medium to, to large businesses and even enterprise uh, are, are hosting things with DreamHost in our cloud. So a little bit of history and context for who we are. Uh, DreamHost has been around since 1997, and we have over 400,000 customers, 1.5 million apps and sites hosted on our infrastructure, and we're built entirely on open source. Uh, DreamHost was founded really on the, the LAMP stack back in the, in, the, in the 90s, and now we're pushing forward on, on the cloud, the stack of the cloud, right? Open stack for the future. Uh, and you know, we were the creators of the Ceph uh, distributed Storage Project. One of our co-founders, Sage Weil, actually created that uh, project um, at DreamHost, and we incubated it and then spun out Ink Tank and sold it to Red Hat. And now we also have built uh, a bunch of open source tech around virtual networking uh, and have spun that out as well in a business called Aconda, and that just got accepted uh, as Project Astara into OpenStack under the big tent. So we're really excited about that as well. So we have a long history of open source and involvement in the community. In terms of where our customers are located, all of our infrastructure is located currently in the United States, but we have a global reach. Uh, a, a significant portion of our customers come from outside the United States, and actually these numbers have even shifted further. And the cloud products themselves, this is even more uh, true with customers you know, all over the world. So we were a founding member of the OpenStack Foundation. We've been involved since around the Cactus Diablo releases. Um, our CEO, Simon Anderson, is on the board of directors at the foundation. And we have made significant contributions upstream uh, to Neutron, Oslo Cinder, a bunch of other things. I talked about Astara already. And we're involved with operators and, and the DEF Core project and program. And uh, again, we've created a lot of open source software. So let's talk about what you can do with a cloud. Now that we have one running, and we've been talking about having programmable infrastructure. We want to use programmable infrastructure because that makes everything repeatable. We want to have automations around your application going from being in your Git repository running on a virtual machine, maybe locally for testing, into having a running instance that your customers and your users can, can use easily, and you want to have all of that automatically. So the programmable infrastructure or the cloud um, is capable of doing that for you. You want to you wanna have that. So the demo that we're going to go through now, we're going to go from uh, having nothing running to um, uh, having a demo uh, application, an application written in PHP yeah. using Apache, uh, very simple for taking notes. And we're going to do that without having to click on anything, like almost anything, basically. The only click we're going to be doing are to switch between one uh, screen to another. So um, for, for doing that, I'm going to show you how do you can do go from zero to running application uh, using the OpenStack Shade Python library in three simple steps. Um, so installation of the SDK, then we're going to start Python and run run our scripts and enjoy taking notes. And the little booklet I handed out to you, you can kind of take this home and, and try this out yourself later. So you know, don't exactly. worry about taking notes, because I saw you all with your laptops out or your phones obviously taking notes and not checking Twitter. So I just wanted to be clear that you have a little booklet. You don't have to worry about that. Wonderful. 
So um, let's see. Let's get started. And in order not to challenge the demo uh, gods, we have recorded uh, this script. But um, so we're gonna look at installing Shade uh, from pip. Very simple. Uh, Shade is a library that has been uh, created by the OpenStack fund, uh, infrastructure team in order to be simple to use and uh, simple for developers. It abstracts and hides details from, your, uh, from the clouds that you've been using for the OpenStack cloud. So now that we have our Shade installed, um, let's do uh, the, the second step is to find Authentication details. Um, so basically, OpenStack re um, Shade requires you to use um, the OpenStack client authentication. It's a YAML file. So just create this YAML file and put into uh, your .config OpenStack um, directory. Put the details that you can also you can get from the uh, Horizon uh, RC file. So this is a little bit of dingbats, but um, very simple. Username and password, your project, and the region name, you're done. Uh, and, and we're cool with that, too. So and you, you certainly could use the standard OpenStack clients as well to do this. Uh, one of the things we like about Shade is it just makes everything a little bit simpler. Very simple. Uh, it's a good way to get started, right? And if you need more power and you need more features than Shade can provide you, you can always try the OpenStack clients themselves. Yeah. Um, yes, of course. Um, or you can, we, we'll talk about other languages uh, after that. So now that we have Shade, we have our authentication done, we can just start Python and play around. And these are the simple way to create an object, a con object that uh, instantiates the cloud with a name dream that we put into, your, into the YAML file. And then we can start exploring our cloud. So let's see how that works, how that looks. Um, so you basically, you start your Python interpreter, and we like IPython because it's so it's interactive, and you can yeah search and back go back. So shade import everything uh, quickly, and then y you get your cloud instantiated. And you can see um, the the cool thing about uh, having to I mean the cool thing is that you can you need to look at your cloud, what it offers, what kind of images they have available. Um, and you know, auto completion. It's also a very cool feature in IPython and and Shade. But you can see what kind of images you have and what kind of flavors you have, and so that you can make your uh, choice. Um, so, for example, this is you know you can see that you have names and you have an ID. That's very important. The IDs change, but the names usually don't change. So that's something to keep in mind for the future. And flavors also, depending on the clouds, some uh, use the some names and some other names. But here you can see also all the details that are valuable to you. How many CPUs, how much RAM um, you have in those. And you can see there the, the flavor list. The, the largest flavor in uh, Dream Compute is actually called Plaid. And it's uh, got 64 v vCPUs uh, and 128 gigs of, of RAM, which is a pretty healthy uh, a VM, and we'd love for you all to spin those up and keep them running all the time. That'd be great. Uh, yeah, and all of the all of the flavor names are actually inspired by the the classic film Spaceballs. So you can see we're really an enterprise business. Uh, should I do the developers, developers, developers thing now? Uh, I need later. my IBM glow sticks. We can do later. So okay. the other thing that you want to do is, uh, if you want to connect to the virtual machine via SSH, you can upload. Um, the key inside there, but you don't have to uh, necessarily. Uh, so, you know, we we can we can demo that, but um, you you don't necessarily have to SSH into into a machine. You, sometimes you have to because you want to check logs. But um, one way to do it is to just upload your public key from your personal directory and put it on Dream Cloud. You give it a name, and there you have it. Um, but we will not need to SSH into it. It's, um, we're going to use another trick to deploy the application. So um, this is, you know, the code is a little bit um, fancy here, uh, fancier, 
then just I'm not sure an if else is all that fancy. Remember, we're at a conference full of developers here. I think they got it. Yeah. I feel we're, good about it. You're right? Okay, cool. We're done with that. Um, now, so this is fancy. <laughs> this is fancy. This is fancy because this is about uh, creating, opening a port 80 and make sure that we, we, have, it, um, we have it running. Uh, so what, Your VM what, wouldn't be very useful if you couldn't actually hit the, uh, the, the web browser or the HTTP Exactly. Port, so. so usually by the, well, many clouds don't open any ports. So uh, security groups are used inside OpenStack clouds and Dream Compute. Um, pretty much like a firewall. So you need, before you can uh, use a specific service, you need to make sure that that port is accessible from the outside. And we use security groups uh, for those, for that. Um, so again, a little bit of fancy Python code just to make sure that we don't have already a security group called web. But we created here, um, and by making sure that we can, we can access um, port 80, port 443, and while we're at it, I added uh, port 22 just to make sure that we can XSH into it just in case. Um, so the code just um, creates, the, um, creates the group if it's not existing already. Um, and um, we're good. So we have a security group name called web. And that's what we're going to use in the next step. And while Stefan will cues that up, one th quick thing to note is if you sign up for Dream Compute, one of the things we do for you for your convenience is we go ahead and create you a default security group that has some of the most common things available, right? Uh, yeah. Including HTTP, HTTPS, SSH. Uh, and, but you, you know, obviously have the ability to create your own and do whatever you want. Right. And, and here we can see how they look like um, in, internally. So the next step is to the actual core of our deployment script. It's a very simple script, and we use cloud in it to inject inside the virtual machine as it is booting, as it's being created, um, code that pulls, um, installs apt-get, uh, via apt-get installs git, php5, dragging all the dependencies, so Apache 2 is also being installed, and then very simply goes into uh, var www.html, Inside there, it pulls from Git the application that we want and does a little bit of maintenance to make sure that things can actually be written inside there and exits. So, and once we have that done, we can launch the instance with uh, um, getting our, so, launch the instance getting all the, uh, details that we want to add. So we sh import the shade. So here's you know, the application. Instantiate our connection. Create the con object. From that con object, we um, create pick an image ID. This is interesting because, as you can see, uh, we are using the name of the instance, not the ID. And we're using a function of shade to search through the, uh, through the list of images we'll find the one called Ubuntu 14.04 and pulls the image ID from there. Because image IDs are often changed uh, inside the cloud. The Dream Compute, we're pretty good at keeping, keeping the upgrades and uh, fixes inside our images. And um, therefore, you, you, you can you make sure that your, uh, your code is secure by using the image name instead of the image ID. Um, then you assign the name of the, to the instance, the flavor, uh, the name of the key pair for your secure SSH group, security group that we created before. And this is our script um, for cloud init uh, to boot. And after that, we create the machine. We, we let Shade uh, talk to the Dream Cloud and execute all these steps um, by creating this instance. And um, the one thing that is pretty cool here is the auto IP equals true. That means that the, you don't have to care about, you don't have to think about um, clouds that uh, create, assign a, uh, a routable public IP, um, IP address to the machines or not. Um, Dream Compute by default offers an I, a publicly routable IPv6 address. But IPv4s uh, being so scarce, we assign them only on demand. If you need an IPv4, we can do it. But using Shade, you get one by default. Shade takes care of that. So if you, 
uh, by specifying auto IP equals true, you get an IPv4 also assigned from it's your pool. It actually saves a bunch of steps if you were doing this with the standard OpenSAC clients, which granted you're getting more flexibility, but the nice thing about this is if you're just trying to get something up real quickly, this is a great way to do it. And, yeah. and like Stefano said, we support IPv4 and IP, IPv6. And the other great thing is uh, creating this server, it actually goes pretty fast. You know, we hear a lot about, you know, spinning up containers real quickly and how great that is. But in Dream Compute, actually, thanks to the Ceph storage backend and copy on write, we can spin up instances in as little as 45 to 60 seconds, which is pretty fantastic. So. It's extremely quick. So once we have that, we can go to our... Um, we can go to our website and we have something like this running. And indeed... Uh, oops, demo gods. <laughs> so this app is actually a little open source app called Jotter. And it's kind of uh, sort of like a, a notepad, etherpad kind of situation, right? Yep. Um, so here we have it. And I put some notes in here. Yay, it worked. Yay. In five ish minutes if you take out all of the talking and my dumb jokes. So, right. Especially my dumb jokes. So, right. So we haven't really upset the, the demo gods because we haven't tried this. this um, <laughs> we is, also cheated. So. Yeah, we, we, we cheated. We recorded all of this. And uh, so, uh, but, but, you know, since we have time, I... Go for it. I do it. He asks the permission and I give it. <laughs> All right, so let's see how it goes. So I want to show you um, the demo. The demo. So it's exactly the same code that we, you saw before. No tricks here. But you can see it's actually a, a little bit shorter, more compact. We're not doing it interactively every step in IPython. Right. It's actually a pretty small little script. Okay. All right, everybody cross your fingers. So I turned on a little bit of debugging. So we're going to get the, the um, feedback from Shade with all the tasks that it's, that it's running. You can see that it's asking glance the list of images, make sure that um, those are available, the ones that I asked for, Ubuntu 14.04 and Flavor 100. And uh, now it's uh, getting the list of servers to make sure that the, the one that I, I want is not timeless. already there. Right, it's even going to be less than five minutes now that I really think about it. Right? Yeah, you know? it's less than five. It's five minutes if you need to study something. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it can go very, very fast. And, and now it's uh, sent the, it, Shade has sent the instruction to uh, create the server, and now it's waiting, it's polling every now and then to make sure that the um, Nova is actually executing in the background and, and uh, creating the server. Um, and soon we should be g getting to the point where it's, we're getting an IP address for the, for the virtual machine. He says confidently. Yep. In spite of uh, every, every demo god ever failing. No, it's, Don't it's all in the hands of Neutron and Akanda. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we're getting the networks here, you can see, and we got it. It's pretty cool. So we got a floating, floating IP, and this is the output of our search. We, we got the demo. Yay! It didn't fail. Everyone just cheer, because uh, these guys are the ones who made it happen. Right here. OK. Um, and let's. So Steph, do you have the uh, actual IP address for it in there? Yeah, that's. Um, I don't want to, yeah, I won't. Let me see. No worries. We'll finish the, uh, we'll finish the slides, and then if anybody wants to see. Oh, yeah, let's, let's do that. I mean, um, so, uh, sh so raise your hand if you've ever launched an instance in an OpenStack cloud before. All right, I w uh, there you go. All right, a decent number of you. Jill, where's your hand? Put your hand up. You, you haven't done it? OK, good. Cool. So this is in, um, so we have a bunch of uh, possibilities. We can use Python Shade, but also we have instructions uh, on how to use libcloud, uh, still Python, if you like, and we like Python. 
but we also have instructions on how to do that with Ruby using the Ruby fog and Java and Ansible. Ansible 2 is pretty cool. It's coming up, and they already have incorporated Python Shade, so you can you can specify. It already knows the OpenStack server and Dream Compute by um, by default um, uh, primitives. So you can you can create servers by specifying them into your your own playbooks. Um, That's going to be a big shift, I think. Having Ansible 2 is going to make OpenStack clouds in general, especially those that are really well integrated in Shade very easy to use for any, any old developer out there. And it's, that's one of the advantages of, for Dream Compute being based on top of OpenStack is that we inherit all of the work that, it, that the open source community has been doing uh, for OpenStack. And um, yeah, we have all of those available. Uh, and so, right, so we are running. Um, Dream Compute, uh, the DreamOS cloud is available for consumption, so we're happy to have you uh, talk to us. We are at, at the booth in the, other, in the other room, and you have a memo of how to, how to use this. So now it's time to go check our instance that is OpenStack Tokyo demo. There it is. That we launched. And if this doesn't work, I think we should all just blame GitHub, right? That's obviously what. No, it worked. So yeah. Yep. Yay. All right. Thank you, every, thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank Shade. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions, doubts? We can talk at the yeah. at the booth. <laughs>